ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bert Brown and I was serving in the forces during the war. I served with the British Army, uh, Royal Artillery. Uh, when I was posted abroad to Normandy, I was attached to the Canadian First Army and I spent quite a part of the time with them. I got transferred to other units further on. Well, after us reaching the Rhine and crossing the Rhine, we had quite a heavy affair with the Germans because they were their last stand against us. They sent boys of as young as eight years of age and old men. And it got so fierce that the Canadians sent their infantry to help us. When we got there, hold up in a bomb hole and put our gun in position and lorry and then we found ourselves under heavy water fire. Finally after that cleared we went through the town and we was in Germany and every house and every building wore white sheets and white cloth to say they surrendered. Well, passing on from there, we had to hand our lorries and our guns in because they were needed for the Far East campaign. When we um, reached a part of Germany where our guns and lorries were no longer with us, we had to find somewhere to sleep under cover. And they took us to this area where it was a big um, area where they had um, nuts and all that they used to sort of dry out and we slept amongst that. It was all full of rat infested area on the right hand side. It was a narrow road on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we come across this big building with gates and German uh, sentry box. Went to this building, it was all full of clocking in cards and wage packets where the Germans clocked into every day. In the courtyard, there was buildings in a far distance. We were told not to approach them too close because of the, the germs, the smell, because this building was used for forced labour for the DPs, displaced people. And they worked from this place. They had bunks three feet, three positions high. And the smell of the place was disgusting. Terrible. We were told to wear cloths over our face. In the yards there was bodies laying about, flies, flies, inch long. We never seen flies like it. And the smell of the place is awful. These DPs, when they approached us, they were penniless, they had no clothes, and all they were all about what to do, they walked around like zombies. Imagine what it would be like to be a DP, captured by these Germans and brought to this place to work for them, forced labour. Their wives were departed from their husbands, their children were taken away from their parents, and then they was penniless, without only this sort of uniform, they had no clothing of any kind. And very badly fed and very badly treated. We don't know what hours they worked, but they lived a ghastly life. And all the time they were under control of these Germans. Do people realise what the people in Europe had to suffer under the German regime during the war? How they didn't know from one day to the next whether they'd be alive or dead just to continue to work for the German regime. It didn't help their lives in no way. We couldn't approach these people under control of our officers. We wasn't allowed to approach these DPs for fear they may have the plague and it'd be spread amongst British troops. So we only had to talk to them six or eight feet away and no way we were to allow to offer them any food. Uh, in the meantime, 
the fighters was getting uh, uh, to winners to come help them, like the Red Cross and whatever. The uh, Red Caps was there with us and they controlled us. We wasn't allowed to bother. We were allowed to help them. It wasn't our fault. We couldn't, we wasn't allowed to do that. And so for days, this carried on. Hordes and hordes of these people coming out of this camp, which we found out was Belsom. They've heard of all the world since. Where loads and loads of people were in ditches. Their bodies rotten, right in the way. We've seen mostly men and women. I expect there were men and women in parts of the camp. A vast place. And we couldn't do nothing closely with them because of that. People don't seem to realise when you get that situation, you're forced into what you must and mustn't do to the fear of epidemics. And that was the biggest fear of all was an epidemic and would it spread. I mean, this was in early uh, May, just when the war ended. Lots of, lots of uh, DBs died in traumatic circumstances. In the meantime, the German troops had all disappeared and they had donned on all the civilian clothes to hide from us. It took ages to round them up. But, uh, my dramatic fear never be been to this dramatic area, the smell, the dysentery. The, the control commission for the journey done a great job for everyone, helped in every way and need that they could. And they've done it every day and every walk of life. Providing food, general cover for than people to sleep under, tents and whatever, and health. Done de delousing for people. Everything they could actually do, they done. So I can say all power to the, the people who designed this. It helped to bring the EEC where it is today. Perhaps people will realise this happened in 1945 in early May, and I was a soldier of 21 years of age. This is a photograph of me when I was 21 years of age. So I hope the people today will understand things have changed quite a lot in those years. To, and I hope the next generation will appreciate what happened in those days when DPs were treated in a terrible way and the world will be better in the future.